Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. So here's the question for today. What is love bombing? But more importantly, what isn't love bombing? This is part of a new series on what some key elements in the world of narcissism is, but more importantly, what they aren't. Before I get to that, because I know a lot of you are interested in taking all this knowledge to a place of healing. If you're interested in do doing a deep dive on healing, please go to the video notes. You can learn more about our healing program that does a much deeper dive than we can do here on YouTube. But I hope you've been thinking about this question of what is and what isn't love bombing. You can even put some of your answers in the comments, but let's take this one on. This series is, like I said, on what is and what isn't, these really important, almost glossary of narcissism terms. I really do believe if you understand what something isn't, you're in a much better position to understand what it is. So love bombing, right? the first stop on the train of every narcissistic relationship. Sometimes love bombing is sort of what I call reality TV dating. Big gestures, grand gestures, materialistic, grossly, and sort of creepily romantic. Just too much. For regular folks out of reality TV, love bombing may be grand gestures, certainly, as well as disproportionate gifts early in a relationship. It's often intense, fast, overwhelming, distracting. There may be constant contact, text morning, noon, and night. They may want you to be dazzled by what they're doing and may even get a little prickly if you aren't ooing and aahing sufficiently. Experiences may be intense really fast. For example, oh, we're going on a third date, but you're going to need your passport. Now, sometimes the love bombing may not be so grandiose. Love bombing works because it hits what matters to you. So let's say you are a fixer or a rescuer and you meet a person whom you're attracted to and who is telling you their sad story and are oh so grateful that you are helping them out. For a pleaser, that honestly is its own form of ecstasy. I was talking to a woman recently who was busy with her career and the love bomb, she told me that the love, the narcissist love bombed her by doing stuff for her. He fixed stuff in her house. He took care of her errands and did all the nuisancey details of her life. That was what won her over. So love bombing really intersects with what the narcissist learn matters to us. All of you know what love bombing is. Okay. You almost know better than I do. The question really becomes what isn't love bombing? Now, obviously, any normal beginning of a relationship that is chill, maybe meeting for coffee, then slowly working your way up to more time, getting to know someone, learning about them and them learning about you. That's not love bombing. <clears throat> That's a normal courtship, right? So what is love bombing not? Not all attention at the beginning of a relationship is love bombing. A quaint romantic gesture like showing up with normal flowers isn't necessarily love bombing. Taking you to a nice restaurant isn't necessarily love bombing. Even having fun text conversations is not necessarily love bombing. As long as like it doesn't feel overwhelming, fast, that there are good boundaries, it's probably not love bombing. So if you're able to voice a preference and maybe have to cancel on something, because, I don't know, of a conflict. And then the other person has an appropriate response and doesn't view it as some sort of personal affront. That's a good sign. We expect attention in the beginning of a relationship. And if it doesn't feel overwhelming and too much, it's not love bombing. Secondly, a great first date is not necessarily love bombing. I mean, here's hoping it is a first great first date, right? That it's fun and light, sparkly and a great conversation. Just because you had a great first date in a lovely place doesn't mean that it's love bombing. Curiosity is not love bombing. If there is a question you don't want to answer and say that, uh, I don't feel comfortable answering that and they don't pressure you, that's great. If it feels like an interrogation, it may be love bombing. But if it feels like a comfortable curiosity, then it just may be that healthy inquisitive period at the beginning of a relationship. Next, doing something special is not love bombing. If one of your early dates is a thoughtful picnic or hard to get concert tickets 
or a fun activity you may consider to be very special and that happens early in a relationship, it may just be that. If there's lots and lots of it and it seems grandiose or excessive, and I recognize that grandiose and excessive are subjective terms, you may be in the love bomb. But some people panic early on. Oh no, we're doing something special. Is this love bombing? Listen, if there's empathy, compassion, respect, kindness, self-awareness, genuineness, and special gestures, then you hit the jackpot. Special without red flags is just good. Some people worry, is talking every day early in a relationship or FaceTiming or whatever, is that love bombing? Not necessarily. If it doesn't feel pressured or it doesn't feel as though the person will become angry at you because you aren't always available, then that's okay. Pay attention to how it feels. Does it feel comfortable or does it feel pressured? Does it feel genuine or does it feel too much? Just having daily contact doesn't make it love bombing. But if early in the relationship, if communication becomes an issue and the narcissistic person is sort of complaining because you aren't available when they want you to be, then that feels love bombing, right? Intense and could be a very big red flag. Complimenting you is not a love bombing. If the other person, if the new person you're in a relationship with is offering appropriate compliments, I'm having so much fun, I really am enjoying getting to know you, you're beautiful, then you're good. Love balmy compliments tend to be, I have never felt anything like this ever before. This feels like an unbelievable once in a lifetime love story. Our connection is magical. We are magic together. Or they say, I'm falling in love with you before the appetizer. Compliments are lovely. Grandiose compliments could be love bombing. I think that it's great that more and more people are talking about love bombing. The challenging part, though, I can see is that a lot of this love bombing talk is scaring people. And people are worried that compliments, attention, and a good first date may qualify. Let me tell you this, if you've been love bombed, you know it. It feels like a Disney princess movie mixed up with a rom-com with a top note of true crime. It's overwhelming and also a little bit menacing. My wish for all of you is to get all the good parts of, of the love bombing without the manipulation, gaslighting, control, and cruelty. Honestly, sometimes when people say, I actually feel like I'm in a fairy tale. Sometimes that's a little concerning. Life isn't a fairy tale. It's not supposed to be a fairy tale. Life is supposed to be life. And when we fall into some of our childlike hopes of things wanting things to be otherwise, that's when there's that real risk of love bombing and all the stuff that comes after it coming at us. So good luck. And here's hoping you get your love, your non-toxic, love, maybe not a bomb, but sort of like love splash. Thanks again.